We have been married for four years. We have not been able to consummate the marriage. I am unable to have children. There is just so much family pressure. After four years of marriage and endless discussions, we have decided to separate. Please lie down. I am just going to be doing an internal examination. It's not going to hurt. Don't worry. Don't worry. Please lie down. Oh, doctor, I I just can't do it. Hello everyone. This is Dr. Anjali Kumar once again bringing you greetings from Maitri. Maitri is a space where we talk anything and everything about women's health. So today we will be talking about a very distressing and a frustrating problem which many couples face today. And today we also have my colleague with me Dr. Jyoti Kapoor. She is a senior consultant psychiatrist and a psychotherapist. She is also the founder of a mental well-being clinic which is called Manasthali in Gurgaon. So today we will be talking about vaginismus. Vaginismus is a very distressing situation in which the vaginal muscles tense, tighten or contract automatically in response to any attempts at the vaginal penetration in anticipation of the fear of pain. This vaginal penetration could be in the form of sex it could be even the insertion of a vaginal tampon or a menstrual cup or maybe when you go for a doctor's examination or maybe even a trans vaginal examination and mind you there is nothing physically wrong there it's just the automatic response of the muscles to the fear inside and the experience is so distressing it can be so terrifying that people continue to suffer in pain and in silence and on top of that this is such a private and sensitive matter that people do not want to talk about it so dr jyoti what do you think is the reason for the vaginismus when there is nothing physically wrong there exactly dr anjali and like you said that uh, vaginismus is a distressing condition so much so that it has led to many people not even consummating their marriage after years together If you look at the basic reason for something like that it it's not physical as in it is not in that part of the body but it is in the control of that part of the body and what controls any part of our body is basically our mind so it's a mind body condition so when we have something uh, which is stressing us troubling us threatening us what is the first thing that we do we protect ourselves we contract our muscles we kind of go into a defensive mode and this is what uh, vaginismus is wherein the woman's mind is scared or afraid of uh, you know penetration as if it is certain threat and because of that it tries to protect itself by constricting or causing a spasm in the pelvic muscle and then any further attempt makes it quite painful the reasons are uh, primarily as i said in the mind so there can be a belief system associated with sexual intercourse that it is not a good thing yes. it could be related to you know uh, some past trauma or experience wherein a person has suffered because of it it could uh, be also related to some past uh, physical anomaly that may have led to pain and uh, some kind of uh, you know distress associated with it and now it's embedded in the psyche and one doesn't want to go further with any kind of uh, vaginal penetration or attempt at sex so this is the fight and a flight response the sympathetic response of the body that you want to protect yourself against any kind of a perceived trauma right So uh we also have seen that vaginismus can develop even in women who have had sex earlier. Yeah. So uh what is the reason for that? All right. So uh, vaginismus has been clinically divided into primary and secondary. Primary is when somebody has never had, you know, penetrative sex and has always suffered from you know this intense fear even when uh, like you mentioned even when a physical examination was uh, you know attempted or one tried to even insert a vaginal tampon or go for a, a transvaginal ultrasonography this is a case of primary vaginismus and secondary vaginismus after a period of healthy uh, um, relaxed uh, 
penetrative experience, be it sexual or non-sexual, a woman suddenly develops this kind of a fear and that usually happens after a distressing vaginal condition like a like a thrush uh, you know infection uh, which makes uh, penetration irritating or uh, painful it can happen after cases of uh, trauma or uh, where there has been attempted rape or rape uh, it can happen uh, in cases where some other accident or injury in the pelvic area has resulted in an initial you know uh, 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 damage and that has now become the uh, cause of fear. So when a fear or a, a threat is associated, there is, like you mentioned, a threat response, a flight or fight response, and one closes up, one doesn't want to open the doors to their house because, you know, once a chur aya tha. <laughs> yes. So as a gynecologist, we have also seen people who had traumatic childbirths, you know, difficult vaginal deliveries. So they're also, uh, in addition to the body, the mind also gets scarred. So how is vaginismus diagnosed? Most of the times the uh, vaginismus is diagnosed by a gynecologist when patients come to us for the first time saying that they have not been able to consummate their marriage. Many times in our country, surprisingly people come to us saying that they are not able to conceive and when we take a detailed history we find out that the issue is something else. So uh, when we are suspecting the vaginismus from the history then we proceed little carefully. So I as a gynecologist generally want to explain the patient that what we are trying to be doing so Dr. Jyoti, as in my clinical practice we've seen so many patients where despite you know a lot of comfort and reassurance the patients are still not able to relax uh, uh, themselves so you know i've heard there are a lot of grades of vaginismus yeah right and uh, you know you, you you might have anyway gone through it but just to tell the people out there clinically any problem can be on a spectrum from mild to moderate to severe so similarly clinically vaginismus is uh, graded according to what we call Lemon's uh, grading system from grade one, wherein there is a uh, little uh, resistance to increasing levels of resistance or contraction. So much so that in grade five, the woman can become exceedingly uh, uncomfortable, anxious, has palpitations, anxiety, may start feeling nauseous, may even become, um, you know, aggressive or violent because yes. the fear is so much. You have to uh, understand that the level of anxiety is so high mm -hmm. that the person uh, becomes even um, agitated enough to, you know, strike at the doctor or the partner and then obviously uh, no one wants to go beyond that. Yes. So we, at all times, we need to understand that there is physically nothing wrong there. It is the mind which is speaking about that problem. So I have seen many times people come to me and ask, and there are cases where actually result in divorce and separation and things become very bad. And people have this misconception that vaginismus cannot be cured. So what is it? Can it be cured? You know it. <laughs> yes, I know it, but I want the expert to say that yes. Definitely, definitely. See, um, it is a problem and when we have a problem, we do have a solution. So it is not incurable, but the first step is in identification of the problem. So once we have identified the, uh, the problem, the next step is obviously to go to a gynecologist and get it examined. And after the examination has been uh, done and we have identified and diagnosed that it is vaginismus, the next step is to kind of figure out the causes of it, what is the main reason behind it. And then we start working on it from the perspective of the cause of the problem as well as basically the symptomatic part of the problem. That is how we can relax the person mentally as well as help relax the pelvic muscles. So physically. the, uh, yeah, physically so that the penetration becomes uh, easy and uh, of course an enjoyable experience that it is supposed to be in sexual encounters. Yes. So the treatment basically has two parts. We need to deal with the mind and we need to deal with that area physically also. So like Dr. Jyoti said that there is a whole lot of treatment modality in terms of psychotherapy and counseling which is available, which helps to tackle the problem at the level of the mind. 
for the physical uh, relaxation uh, we can uh, ask the woman to do kegels exercises i hope you all have seen our video on kegels exercises which we did last week and kegels exercises are known to help immensely in vaginismus i also have heard about a recent treatment about the botox treatment for the vaginismus so what's your take on that well uh, that is uh, when your muscles are really really spastic and nothing helps then uh, we give botox uh, toxin which paralyzes the muscle basically but i would say that most women would be able to if they persist with physical and psychological treatment would be able to you know get normal uh, penetration vaginismus can be treated so that is the last resort uh, not something that we need to consider right away right away like you mentioned there are kegels exercises other than that there are some yoga uh, yoga asanas like balasan which can help you know uh, improve the flexibility uh, breathing and mindfulness based uh, exercises also have a very very good impact on uh, us physically by helping us relax and that relaxation uh, process can be continued through the day and even through the sexual uh, process the second aspect of treatment of this problem is the fear of penetration because the person is afraid of anything going near you know the vaginal orifice it's like as i said that you know some robbery is going to occur and i have to close my doors so we have to uh, you know slowly open the doors exactly and train our brain to look at the person or the thing entering as not like something which is of which is right. threatening mm -hmm. uh, that it is uh, be it a q tip that we start with or be it a speculum or be it the male member that is out there to you know give you some fun so that's why it should stop looking like a threatening thing to the woman so we have vaginal dilators for that so this is what is the desensitization that slowly and slowly we train the woman to use progressively increasing sizes of the vaginal dilator so that the vaginal muscles and the mind tends to get used to the uh, uh, vaginal penetration so uh, other than this part uh, we talked about the sensate focus sensate focus is basically uh, in the vaginal uh, mucosa there are erogenous areas when uh, they are touched or triggered they increase the you know uh, stimulation or they uh, make one feel better so uh, sensate focus is something that a woman can uh, herself find out by inserting her own finger in fact something which is not usually mentioned in treatments and before our episode it would not be mentioned in much of the internet thing would be masturbation and the process of masturbation can be quite uh, useful when it yes. comes to dealing with vaginismus especially because uh, it is in a woman's safe space it is associated with women's own acceptance of her own sexuality and her uh, attempt at uh, making her happy or uh, you know her relax with her own uh, sexual uh, part so therefore it's a very useful option many a times when clients come to us and we tell them that you know how is the experience in masturbation so if you're not able to say have sex with your partner and they would say they never masturbated because no no i don't indulge in such things it's not good so such things well frankly speaking masturbation like we tell everybody is a perfectly natural thing mm. and uh, one is born with this instinct one is capable of doing it on her own and if she uses this uh, with some sort of you know uh, psychological uh, training of fantasizing or using certain aids it can be quite useful in you know finding that uh, um, ability to relax and you know enjoy a very perfectly natural process of sex so vaginismus is actually the tip of the iceberg it actually means that there is lot simmering underneath so the hardest step is actually the first step which is to acknowledge the problem and to ask for help So thank you Dr Jyoti Kapoor for being on our channel and today like always if you found this information useful please do not forget to like share and subscribe to Methvi and do not forget to follow Dr Jyoti Kapoor she is there on YouTube Facebook Instagram so this was the last episode in our vaginal health series for this season next coming up on Methvi is the infertility series So stay tuned in and we will see you soon